All I wanted was a haircut. But the moment I walked into the barber shop, someone teased me by saying, uh-oh, five O's in the building. Soon I was talking about matters related to the police force, with the barbers, a pastor, a young man, and a community leader. As it turned out, the conversation was humanizing, candid, and refreshing. That experience gave me an idea. I launched a program called Cops and Barbers, where police officers in uniform visit barbershops around the city and spark authentic conversations with the hairdressers and their clients, the people we promise to protect and to serve. It's a liberating experience when we step into community spaces and have honest conversations about our common concerns. We are able to see the shared humanity that bridges us and not so much what divides us. Hi, my name is Omar Salem. I'm a police sergeant and a SWAT team leader for the city of Napa, California, and a practicing Muslim. Let me share with you my story. A few years ago, I was assigned as a school resource officer at a local high school, where rival gang members were fighting in an endless cycle of an eye for an eye. It got to the point where we could not arrest our way out of the problem. Something had to change. I thought I'd be able to relate to these teens because I'm the son of parents who fled the war in Iraq and Afghanistan and moved to America. I grew up surrounded by Latino culture. My stepmom was Mexican, que me enseñó español. And I learned to connect with people from very different backgrounds. So I sat down with the rival gang members at school, and we talked about what they needed to break the cycle of violence and how we might bring about change. I realized what they were really looking for was a sense of belonging and validation. In each of them, I saw Malcolm. Let me explain. Malcolm X was an African-American Muslim whose short life was full of radical transformations. He started as an idealistic boy in an all-white grammar school whose dreams of becoming a lawyer were shattered by the murder of his father and a racist school teacher. Then came the rebellious Malcolm Little, a youth who landed in prison for larceny and breaking and entering. In prison, he began to read and embrace the life of the mind that transformed him into the man we know as Malcolm X, who became a leader in the Nation of Islam a black nationalist religious movement. Based on his early life and the doctrine of his new teacher, Elijah Muhammad, he saw all white people as devils and as enemies and believed that African-Americans should advance their cause by any means necessary. Later, however, after falling out with his teacher and making the pilgrimage to Mecca, Malcolm found himself within mainstream Islam and was transformed once more. He recognized the universal dignity of all humankind and even welcomed working with well-intentioned white people. What inspires me most about Malcolm was how he changed his views when he learned new truths. It takes strength to seek knowledge and purpose and to admit that our assumptions are wrong. From Malcolm, I learned to see the strength in others and to understand their potential to change themselves. I was also inspired by the story of Muhammad Ali and Joe Martin. Muhammad Ali grew up as a black kid named Cassius Clay in the segregated city of Louisville. One day, when Cassius was 12, someone stole his bike. So we went to the police station to report the theft. He met Joe Martin, a white officer, and told Martin that if he ever caught the thief, he would whoop him. Officer Martin was not only fighting segregation in the city, but was also a local boxing instructor. So we asked little Cassius if he knew how to fight. When Cassius said he didn't, Martin invited him to the integrated Columbia gym where he taught boxing, a kind and caring officer. Martin continued to coach him and in 1960 accompanied him to the Olympics where Clay won gold medal for the USA. Clay later embraced Islam and became Muhammad Ali and always credited Martin with launching his boxing career. The African-American Muslim and the white policeman became lifelong friends. The common thread in the stories of Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali is the importance of reaching impressionable youth with care and compassion. And mentoring them before they take the wrong path that inevitably leads to prison. That brings me back to those teenage gang members. When I saw the humanity and the desire to belong buried beneath their aggressive exteriors, it motivated me to co-found Legacy Youth Project, a program to provide a safe, transformative space for students. It was all about hard work, about developing character. Like Malcolm taught me, once the character was refined, knowledge and learning follows. And like Muhammad Ali showed me, a caring cop can make all the difference in the life of a youngster. We asked the rival gang members to participate in a pilot project for six months. We went back to the basics. They learned how to enter a classroom in a respectful manner. 
Then they had to understand that their typical derogatory greetings were dehumanizing and learn to use words that honor their receiver. Overall, they realized to break the cycle of conflict and pain, they had to confront their misconceptions honestly and humbly and work to understand and empathize with their fellow human beings, no matter how different they seem. The result was phenomenal. 100% high school graduation rate and a 75% increase in the average GPA. The project was later featured in a documentary called The Mask You Live In. Years later, one teenager wrote this on his college application. My participation in the program led me to a transformational academic and human experience where I discovered layers about myself that my former gang affiliation had suppressed. He's now married and working successfully. That's a life saved. That's prophetic. His story will always remind me of the power of empathy and the influence a conscious police officer can have in the lives of troubled youth. Can you imagine what our communities would become if we all use our spheres of influence to relate rather than alienate and to connect rather than separate? Let's grow comfortable with being uncomfortable and learn to disagree without being disagreeable. There's a lot of work to be done to begin to change this great nation. And some of it is most certainly in the way we police. But let's also celebrate and never forget this nation's continued move towards a more perfect union. Our work begins with the light of an honest and humble conversation at a barbershop or a school that may lift the fog from the bridges that have always connected us. Thank you. I'm Sergeant Omar Salem for the Mirstein Center. If this message is meaningful to you, please share it with a friend or colleague.